The Job Guarantee Design, Jobs, and Implementation by Pavlina Cherneva Part 6 Program Design and Implementation The above features and aims represent the core of the Job Guarantee proposal. Program objectives and specific, specific design features would be reevaluated and adapted to observe structural and institutional changes in labor market and other economic conditions. Indeed, this blueprint does not and cannot provide a one-glove-fits-all proposal. Any job guarantee program must be suited to the cultural, developmental, institutional, and macroeconomic context for the country that contemplates adopting it. Section 1. Short versus Long-Run Design and Operation a job guarantee implemented today will be different from a job guarantee that operates over the long run. If a job guarantee program were launched today in conditions of mass hidden unemployment and strong pent up demand for decent well paying jobs, the program might grow to 16 million workers. Once the program is up and running, it will improve private sector employment conditions and the overall health of the economy. At that point, the program will settle to a smaller size, likely anywhere between 2% and 10% of the labor force. Indeed, the size of the program will largely depend on private sector employment dynamics. Employing everyone who is ready, willing, and able to work today is a more challenging task than making employment offers to newly unemployed people once the program has been running for a while. Given the existing long-run labor market problems, collapse in the labor force particip participation rate, large pent-up demand for stable and well-paying full-time jobs, a job guarantee could swell to 11 to 16 million people, which would be approximately 7 to 10 percent of the labor force. Experience with large-scale job programs of this sort Argentina's Plan Jefes, which employed 13% of the labor force, indicates that they can be up and running in a relatively short period of time. Plan Jefes was explicitly modeled after the job guarantee proposal developed in the United States by a team of scholars, several of whom are affiliated with the Levy Institute. It also suggests that the program would provide a large boost to private sector activity, generating strong D GDP growth and private sector employment. Fulweiler's simulations corroborate this expectation. He finds that the job guarantee raises real GDP by three, 313 to 560 billion dollars per year and permanently adds up to 4 million net new private sector jobs. These, si these, simul these simulations do not account for the cyclical effects. In Argentina, for example, the job guarantee pool began shrinking steadily as the economy expanded. Section 2. The Superior Policy Option – Hiring the Unemployed The policy choice before us is the following. We either have a buffer stock of un unemployed people or a buffer stock of employed people. That is, Either we continue under the status quo, where the pool of unemployed people expands and shrinks with recessions and expansions, or we allow the job guarantees pool of employed people to shrink and expand counter-cyclically. Since unemployment is already paid for in real and financial terms, diverting these financial and real resources to running the job guarantee program is a far superior option to the status quo status quo. Furthermore, with the job guarantee in place, which is inherently a counter-cyclical employment policy, the economy can operate at a higher level of non-inflationary output than with mass unemployment, i.e. than with an unemployed buffer stock. The size of the program will depend on private sector employment dynamics as well as on its popularity. If society prefers 
larger private sector employment, and a smaller job guarantee labor force, other macroeconomic measures can be employed. For example, investment subsidies, tax cuts, mission-oriented finance, to shrink the pool of job guarantee workers further. But if the program proves to be a much more desirable policy option than many poorly paid private sector jobs, it may initially be quite large until those private sector firms meet and exceed the pay and employment conditions of the job guarantee. Because the program operates countercyclically by creating full employment at all stages of the business cycle, recession or expansions, it stabilizes total employment, meaning that private sector employment will not fluctuate as violently as it does today. In sum, once the program is in place, economic fluctuations will be reduced, meaning that employment in the job guarantee will also be more stable. Section 3. Preparedness Response – Community Jobs Banks The proposal here is to design the program as a comprehensive preparedness response. A period of planning will be required to design community job banks. These will warehouse the on-the-shelf jobs that can be supplied to the jobless on short notice. For this purpose, the planning period will include soliciting and identifying project executing organizations that would serve as the providers for those job opportunities. Designing the job guarantee as a preparedness response can be modeled after the Center for Disease Control's CDC Strategic National Stockpile, SNS. The nation's largest stockpile of essential pharmaceuticals and medical supplies in case of emergencies. The SNS is designed as a supplement to local preparedness efforts. As the CDC website explains, when state, local, tribal, and territorial responders request federal assistance to support their response efforts, the stockpile ensures that medicine and supplies get to those who need them most during an emergency. Organized for a scalable response to a variety of public health threats, the repository contains enough supplies to respond to multiple large-scale emergencies simultaneously. To be able to respond adequately to public health threats, the government maintains warehouses throughout the United States that can distribute vaccines, medication, and other supplies to the local areas in the event of emergencies. Similarly, the job guarantee can be designed as a detailed local preparedness response to joblessness using some of the existing institutional infrastructure more below. The job guarantee will maintain a repository of jobs and places of work via the community jobs banks that can quickly accommodate new entrants into the program and let them go without disruption should they find alternative employment. The ability to absorb or shed employees is not a unique challenge for the job guarantee. Indeed, every labor market segment within the private, nonprofit, or public sectors deals with new entrants and job leavers on an ongoing basis. Furthermore, the creation of jobs relatively quickly need not be a tall task either. Experience has shown that large-scale employment programs can be up and running in a matter of a few months. For example, the New Deal programs in the United States and Argentina's Plan Jefes. Such programs, however, have often been implemented as emergency measures. If the, J if the job guarantee is designed as a preparedness response, a lengthier period of assessment, design, and planning is needed for its long-run success. Once such a program is in place, finding work for, an additional, for any additional entrance is a much easier task by comparison. A fair amount of experimentation may be needed initially, as well as continual evaluation to improve program performance over the long run. Section 4. Preventative Features Because part of the job guarantee program will fluctuate countercyclically, expanding when private employment shrinks, 
and shrinking when private employment expands, it will ensure by design that mass unemployment does not develop and accelerate as rapidly as it does under the status quo. It thereby restrains the contagion effect from an initial onset of private sector mass layoffs and serves as a preventative tool. While it will not eliminate business cycle swings, it will attenuate them. Furthermore, by securing tight full employment, it will help prevent many of the existing social costs of unemployment. Section 5. Program Budget and Funding Mechanism The primary challenge is to design a budget that not only ensures the program's long-run sustainability, but also one that accommodates normal, normal counter-cyclical fluctuations and large swings in enrollment, should those unexpectedly arise. Unemployment behaves like an epidemic, developing rapidly and unexpectedly and spreading with the distinct pattern of a contagion effect. Simultaneously, it inflicts large social and human costs. Therefore, the proposed funding mechanism here is, in part, modeled after disaster and emergency relief in the United States. For example, each year Congress would pass base appropriations for the management of the Job Guarantee Program. Because the actual level of joblessness over a given year is unknown, much as it is with large-scale disasters or smaller localized events, the funding would have to fluctuate with need. This can be accomplished in two ways. One, the base appropriations can be adjusted as needed using the Budget Control Act, which permits some increases in discretionary spending, and number two, unexpected annual increases in job guarantee funding can be provided through supplemental appropriations bills that offer funding not subject to spending caps or budgetary controls. This is the model currently used for disaster and emergency relief. Since natural disasters have intensified, the base budget has proven inadequate, necessitating very large supplemental appropriations that can be vulnerable to abuse. By contrast, the job guarantee tames unemployment fluctuations and stabilizes employment patterns, which suggests that it will not be as, rel as reliant on supplemental appropriations as disaster and emergency relief. The base appropriation budget will initially be estimated to fund a sizable program to employ 11 to 16 million people at $15 per hour plus benefits, equal to 20% of wages, allowing for material costs set at 25% of labor costs. The direct program expenditures would be about 1.3% to 2.4% of GDP, and the net cost of the Job Guarantee Program would vary from 0.8% to 2% of GPD. This is less than what the U.S. government spends annually on elementary and secondary education. In subsequent years, the budget will be calculated as a rolling average of actual funding from previous years. If the job guarantee induces higher level of private sector employment and settles down to a smaller size over the course of several years, then the budget would reflect those changes and the reduced need to fund such a large program. Adjustment in the based appropriations and supplemental appropriations are nevertheless necessary because mass layoffs can occur for any number of reasons. The main reason is that private sector profits as a share of GDP fluctuate over the business cycle, which in turn produce fluctuations in private sector employment rates. To serve as a genuine buffer stock, the budget for the for the job guarantee must fluctuate in a similar fashion. Adjustments in base and supplemental appropriations are also needed for extreme circumstances. For example, the global financial crisis, to the dismay of many economists, resulted in almost a million unemployed individuals per month in early 2009. A standby jobs program 
would have provided alternative employment opportunities to the unemployed, thus remedying, remedying labor market conditions much faster than what we experience. One estimate suggests that if the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act budget funded a job guarantee program instead, it could have created 20 million living wage jobs, wiping out unemployment altogether and launching a strong jobs-led recovery. Since financial crises, geopolitical shocks, and other events may unexpectedly generate sudden mass layoffs, the job guarantee budget would need to increase accordingly to provide needed funding quickly. Furthermore, disaster events such as Hurricanes Harvey and Irma significantly impact local employment rates and demand a discretionary increase in jobs, jobs assistance, similar to other discretionary increases in disaster relief funding. Indeed, current law already provides funding for those who have lost their jobs due to natural disasters. However, it does not provide the employment opportunities which the job guarantee will supply. Congress can appropriate an, un an Employment Relief Fund, ERF, as a supplement to the DOL's budget. The U.S. DOL works with state labor department agencies and their local offices to disperse the payments for wages and materials associated with program management, similar to the way it currently disperses UI payments. Just as it is with disaster relief, DOL offices, as well as the presidency, can issue disaster unemployment declarations that would make additional funds available if there are sudden and acute mass layoffs in a particular area. As discussed above, such a program already exists on the books and can be incorporated into the job guarantee budget. This is the Disaster Unemployment Assistance Program, which provides unemployment benefits to those who have become unemployed as a direct result of a presidentially declared major disaster. If funding for the entire job guarantee program cannot be provided through the Stafford Act of 1988, Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act, a modern Unemployment Emergency Relief Act can be passed for the purpose. Section 6. Administrative Agencies and Project exec Executing Organizations Department of Labor It is proposed that the job guarantee be under the jurisdiction of the Department of Labor, as it is with UI. Similar to UI, states would participate in the program's administration. Congress appropriates funding for the DOL's ERF. As explained above, the specific method of funding allows the DOL budget to fluctuate countercyclically in a manner consistent with hiring everyone who needs work throughout the business cycle. The DOL supplies the general guidelines for the kinds of projects it will authorize under the Job Guarantee Program. Municipalities, in cooperation with community groups, conduct assessment surveys, cataloging community needs and available resources. In consultation with the DOL, municipalities and one-stop job centers create community jobs banks, repositories of types of work and places that can offer employment opportunities to the unemployed on demand. In addition to providing funding to specific agencies, the DOL makes requests for proposals indicating that it will fund employment initiatives by community groups, nonprofits, social entrepreneurial ventures, and the unemployed themselves for projects that serve the public purpose. Grants are, appro are approved contingent on 1. The usefulness of activities performed as measured by their social impact. 2. Creation of employment opportunities for the unemployed and three, to displace no, three, no displacement effect of existing workers. States, municipalities, and community groups. States and municipalities assist in the administration of the program. 
They help in the disbursement of funds and are responsible for the design and implementation at the local level. As discussed above, they conduct community assessment surveys and design the Community Jobs Bank. The involvement of citizens, local community groups, and other stakeholders that represent public interests can ensure that the program enhances participatory democracy in the decision-making process of designing, managing, and funding pro the projects. One-Stop Job Centers The job guarantee need not reinvent the wheel in terms of administrative infrastructure. Local unemployment offices have already been rebranded as local job centers, also called one-stop career centers or American job centers. They are already charged with providing many services to the unemployed, from the actual payments, UI checks, to job search assistance, referrals, training, GED completion, resume building, English as a second language, instruction in math and reading, and other one-on-one -on -one services such as stress management and financial planning. These unemployment offices can, be, can become genuine employment offices by also offering employment opportunities on demand through the job guarantee. Due to chronic job shortages, current attempts to match unemployed workers with employers are largely ineffective. While some outfits may do better than others, in the absence of readily available and abundant job opportunities, going through an unemployment office can often be a stressful and even punitive experience. While they offer some training and education services, at the macro level, training tends to serve the function of shifting people along the unemployment line. These outfits can become fully functional, one-stop job centers and provide the needed job guarantee op employment opportunities while continuing to assist the enrollees with training, education, and transitioning to private sector employment opportunities. Under the Job Guarantee Program, they essentially become the hubs for the local jobs bank that link interested in individuals with job guarantee positions. Public Institutions, NGOs, and Social Enterprises these are the project executing organizations. As discussed above, during the design phase of the program, a series of organizations can be identified that will supply opportunities on demand. Others can be added over time. The job opportunities with these organizations are inventoried with the community jobs banks, job centers. Once the unemployed have been registered at the one-stop job centers, they are provided a menu of work options with the project executing organizations. Identification of project executing organizations is contingent on the general guidelines provided by the DOL, which are in turn informed by the mission statement of the job guarantee. The types of work jobs that will be performed, as well as organizations that will employ the unemployed will be contingent on what is defined as the public purpose. Participor participatory democracy. One of the aspirations of the Job Guarantee Program is to foster a process whereby jobs and projects are proposed and managed from bottom up, i.e. by a direct input of community members and other stakeholders. Because it is a locally based program that targets the needs of the community and its members, the program, ten, the program lends itself to broad participation of constituents in its design and operation. Indeed, for its long-term success, participatory governance is likely a prerequisite. There are many models and real-world experiences that can inform a design that incorporates citizen engagement public decision-making, and local institution building. For example, participatory budgeting can ensure that municipalities rely on citizen input about the local projects that require funding and involve them in the budgeting process itself. Experience with participatory budgeting 
shows that it significantly improves the effectiveness and results of local social programs. It may be considered desirable for the federal government to provide only 85% of all the funding requesting that nonprofits, municipalities, and other social enterprises participate with some resources. These can take the form of physical resources. For, a, for example, some of the materials or facilities where the work will take place can come from the project executing agencies. This arrangement could create local stakeholders and additional buy-in from states and communities. Because the program aspires for citizen input, because it drastically reduces the threat of unemployment, because it puts pressure on punitive labor practices in the private sector, because it establishes a labor standard for pay and working conditions, and because it focuses exclusively on investing in the public good, it can be an institution with profound democratizing tendencies and a conduit for transformative change in the workplace, people's everyday lives, and the economy as a whole. Section 7. Types of Jobs National Care Act Large-scale jobs programs are often identified with large-scale infrastructure projects, and while it is vital to rebuild the nation's infrastructure as a matter of national priority, it is difficult to fluctuate infrastructure investment with changes in the business cycle. Furthermore, infrastructure jobs are often high-skill and predominantly male. Therefore, they are not always suitable for running the job guarantee as an ongoing, long-run program for all that provides employment opportunities to the least skilled and most marginalized groups in the labor market. Working to address looming environmental changes can generate millions of public service jobs for years to come. There is a lot of invisible environmental work that is labor-intensive and can be done by people of various skill levels. This work must be performed on an ongoing basis and could provide the needed job opportunities without competing with the private sector. Establishing and fortifying our nation's infrastructure to prevent, mitigate, and withstand the impact of intensifying hurricanes, tornadoes, fires, and floods requires immediate action and a large labor force. And if a large infrastructure program is attempted alongside the job guarantee, the latter will likely be smaller and it will continue to guarantee job opportunities to those who cannot, cannot work on infrastructure projects. Infrastructure alone is not a particularly reliable method for employing all of the unemployed people who are scattered across the country. Many of them live in community, communities that may not need levees or fire prevention efforts, and yet experience multiple other deprivations, such as limited access to healthy food or care for the young and elderly, to name a few. The proposal herein is to design the Job Guarantee as a National Care Act that will help fill those need gaps. With input from community groups ideally emerging from a participatory decision-making process, localities and municipalities can determine the specific jobs that will be performed under the Job Guarantee along the following three strategic objectives. A. Care for the Environment b. Care for the community, and c. Care for the people. Care for the Environment A revival of FDR's Tree Army and a formation of a 21st Century Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC, would create job guarantee jobs in close proximity to the unemployed. Since all communities have acute environmental needs, the camp-based CCC model from the New Deal is not appropriate or desirable. Instead, jobs will be created where the workers live. The Community Jobs Bank will include a list of monitoring programs, rehabilitation programs, and public investment programs. The jobs will tackle 
soil erosion, flood control, environmental surveys, species monitoring, park maintenance and renewal, removal of invasive species, sustainable agricultural practices to address the food desert, problems in the United States, support for local fisheries, community supported agriculture, CSA farms, community and rooftop gardens, tree planting, fire, and other disaster prevention measures, weatherization of homes, and composting. Care for the community. Communities are best rebuilt from within. Many communities throughout the United States experience urban blight, poverty, and crime. The job guarantee can employ existing best practices to mobilize the human potential within a community to revive it and make it more resilient. Jobs can include cleanup of vacant properties, reclamation of materials, restoration of public spaces and other small infrastructure investments, establishment of school gardens, urban farms, co-working spaces, solar arrays, tool lending libraries, classes and programs, and community theaters, construction of playgrounds, restoration of historical sites, organization of carpooling programs, as well as recycling, reuse, and water collection in initiatives, food waste programs, and oral histories projects. Care for the people. The job guarantee aims to support individuals and families filling the particular need gaps that may be they, they may be facing. Projects would include elderly care, after-school programs, and special programs for children, new mothers, at-risk youth, veterans, former inmates, and people with disabilities. One advantage of the job guarantee is that it, can, is that it also provides job opportunities to the very people benefiting from these programs. In other words, the program gives them agency. For example, the at-risk youth themselves participate in the execution of the after-school activities that aim to benefit them. The veterans themselves can work for and benefit from different veterans outreach programs. Jobs in these projects can include organizing after-school activities or adult skill classes in schools or local libraries, facilitating extended day programs for school children, shadowing teachers, coaches, hospice workers, and librarians to learn new skills and assist them in their duties, organizing nutrition surveys in schools, and coordinating health awareness programs for young mothers. Other examples include organizing urban campuses, co-ops, classes and training, and apprenticeships in sustainable agriculture, and all of the above mentioned community care jobs, which could produce a new generation of urban teachers, artists and artisans, makers and inventors. All of the above mentioned tasks are already being done in one form or another, and all of them are in short supply. What is needed is more helping hands and a budget to employ them. That is the function of the job guarantee. In other words, the job guarantee can benefit from already existing best practices in these areas and simply scale up the production of these public goods and investments in human capital. Section 8. Project Examples. Example 1. The city mobilizes able-bodied men and women with a varied skill levels for a massive cleanup of vacant lots, focusing on rehabilitation and reclamation of materials. Disabled individuals who may have difficulty with physical work but have basic computer skills and wish to work create a database documenting the cleanup efforts, cataloging, cataloging the reclaimed materials and offering office-based logistical support. At-risk youth help with park cleanup and apprentice with local construction companies in building, painting, and landscaping skate parks and basketball courts. 
the city undertakes greening projects and rehabilitation of abandoned public spaces. Example 2. A former coal mining community experiences city blight, mass unemployment, and a high incidence of health problems. The Job Guarantee organizes a comprehensive program for restoring the natural environment using the abandoned coal mine based on existing best practi practices, for example, in some Appalachian areas in the United States. Abandoned mines are filled with water to create man-made lakes. The work involves construction of infrastructure that du directs rivers into the empty craters, work that is suitable for the skill level of the unemployed miners. Others are employed in a mass re reforestation effort to plant appropriate tree species that restore the ecosystem, stem soil erosion, and reintroduce important lost wildlife to the region. The municipalities organize food insecurity, water quality, and malnutrition surveys. They launch a comprehensive community garden program. Example 3. Local CSAs propose to organize and build community gardens throughout the city. They employ local unemployed residents to start up and run the gardens. Produce is distributed to members, sold in local farmers markets, or delivered free of charge to low-income families. In addition to building community gardens, the CSA employs people to build greenhouses and aquaponics operations and run classes for adults and youth related to sustainable agriculture. Local CSAs can offer full and part-time work opportunities and flexible working arrangements. Example 4. A local green nonprofit institute has extensive experience in cre creating, protecting, and expanding the network of public trails. On short notice, it absorbs anyone available to work on trail maintenance and repair. In addition, the nonprofit works on removing invasive species from local areas. The species removal necessitates soil erosion prevention efforts, all of which need to be staffed on an ongoing basis. The Institute also runs an eel and herring monitoring program. People with different skill levels are employed to perform the different tasks. Most of the above do not require much, if any, training or experience. Workers with higher skills can assist in creating maps, documenting the species, and performing research as needed. The nonprofit also offers courses, seminars, and hands on experience for youth and adults in environmental conservation. It also provides flexible working arrangements for those with child or elder care responsibilities. Example 5. A local artist collective employs painters, actors, musicians, and stagehands to run year-round productions for the community. They organize school outreach programs, run summer camps, and offer free art and music classes and literacy through the arts courses for special needs youth. They collaborate with local schools in offering art enrichment programs. Example 6. The local public schools enroll in the job community in the in the community jobs bank and provide a list of shelved projects and programs that can be staffed with job guarantee workers. Some schools would like to expand their playgrounds and repaint and weatherize their facilities. Others would like to offer a greater variety of after-school activities. Most need teacher's aides to assist with low-performing students, lesson plan preparation, and in-class activities. The, the tasks require various degrees of skill and experience. New labor market entrants, such as college students, who are having trouble finding a job, enroll as teacher's aides through the Job Guarantee Program. They gain valuable training and hands-on experience should they wish to go in the field. Former stay-at-home parents who are ready to return to work assist in running new after-school programs. Skilled workers 
who may be seasonally laid off help with weatherization projects.